see you later. Uh, no, true story, I've told it before, but I have sold another basketball feature to Fox 2000 with Marty Bowen um, that I have written and we're in development on that, and they were actually looking for directors on that movie, and they had seen it at the end of the shorts, it actually says directed by Kyrie Irving. So John Fisher, who's another producer on the project who worked for Marty, uh, he saw that and thought, oh, that'd be interesting. His job is to put together a list of possible directors for this other project. The short finalists were especially impactful, including the heartbreaking documentary, The Face of Distracted Driving, the visually stunning and cinematic Universal Machine, the intimate and inspiring Hometown, and the empowering narrative, Sisterhood Action. And the jury's choice for the best short is the face of distraction driving forward. <laughs> Created by AT&T and DVD Award, directed by Aaron Morris. Uh, thank you so much. On behalf of AT&T and our amazing partners, BBDO, uh, I just want to thank everybody for this. Uh, you know, this piece is just one story out of many about the dangers of distracted driving. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, it's all too commonplace. Uh, in New York, there's the dangers of distracted walking, I'm finding out. Um, so, thank you so much, and, uh, and, and please, if you see something, please say something, and please take the pledge. If you can. Nightmare nobody talks about. I mean, you're there every day and you're just like inches and inches. And so to finally get to this marketing place and see that they were so kind of uh, buoyant, it was like their first round, they were so, um, and so many, and all these like dolls popping out of dolls and all. I mean, I love gifts, I think that's how you say it. But I think of them as small gifts without a T. And, uh, but they, they really, you know, they made so many incredible things from what we made. and. So they, I think their inspiration and, and kind of uh, then it took everyone by surprise. I would say I'd say that's what sort of the one sort of like small you know shred of hope for mankind. This idea that the I don't know that the algorithm was able to properly predict that people would be so into watching something effectively about PTSD. You know <laughs> who knew? And, um, and uh, you know how nice that there's still some of that. So and I think, you know, now they've been really smart. I mean, I obviously have a very specific experience of Netflix because it was really, um, you know, they had done Lily Hammer, remember that show? Anybody? Nobody. And, uh, and uh, then they did House of Cards and then I think they really did Orange is the New Black. So to watch kind of, as somebody who loves uh, the history of Hollywood and Irving Thalberg and kind of, you know, uh, what makes Sammy run and uh, Easy Riders, Raging Bulls, like all these books about what it was like to watch in my own lifetime, The Wild Wild West, that was these two kind of powerhouses of Ted Sarandos and Cindy Holland, kind of, you know, the first parties would be just like eight of us, you know, and then watching it kind of move and then having that close of a relationship, like Cindy is a huge ally on um, uh, Russian Valley. The idea that there can feel like there's a personal connection to sort of, you know, what is now this this giant um, is it really makes you feel like this license for true creative integrity in a way because it feels genuinely supported the whole way through. Which was similar, I guess, to Kenzo in that. So I think it's been rarefied experiences that I'm like keenly aware that are, are very, uh, you know, uh, special. Yeah. But it may. I say all that to give some backstory to my shock and delight that uh, Umberto and Carol, uh, you know, sort of the brains behind the current incarnation of Kenzo, allowed me to, to make this thing is truly extreme, and I adore them. <laughs> so, what, so what were, yeah. um, what was that philosophy then that you were uh, applying here? What was the, what, what were you communicating with this, or is there anything? Uh, I, I, yeah, I do think that, uh, you know, I think of this and of course, I probably have much greater clarity on what it is I'm saying there, since so much of it is in gibberish, um, literally. Uh, but so for me, this I really qualify uh, chastity as uh, daddy issues, and I qualify Russian doll as mommy issues, and that's how I separate the two works. But they're really of uh, a thread in my mind of sort of trying to say something about, you know, uh, 
like how does sort of trauma go through the channel of a human being and sort of, uh, you know, get filtered and arrive at the other side in all these sort of uh, fantastical and literal ways. You've been, uh, you've been very close right now. We were just talking about how none of these technologies are new. Um, you know, VR has been around for at least 30 years. AR in different formats has also been around. So um, when we talk about how the landscape has changed, I think we actually have to think of it as a longer continuum than like, oh, Oculus headsets dropped a few years ago. Um, you know, it's, VR has been used to train um, astronauts at NASA for decades. It's been used in the medical fields for quite a long time. AR, you've seen in the NFL, you know, broadcast for years and years. So, um, you know, I think we're, we're riding a much longer wave than I think people usually think about. And um, I would say that the part we're at now is now that we have these commercialized.